the synthesis and reactions of nitriles topic in this lesson. Uh, we're going to look at two ways to synthesize nitriles, both of which are review, one from first semester actually, and then one from earlier in this chapter. And then we're going to look at three reactions of nitriles, all of which you've probably encountered earlier in this course. Now this lesson is part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. Okay, so synthesis of nitriles. And again, just a couple of ways to do this. Uh, and the first is just straight up SN2 here. We're gonna use a nice alkyl halide for SN2. So good backside attacks like a primary halide. So in this case, we're gonna use cyanide as our nucleophile. And it's just gonna come and do backside attack and replace your leaving group with a cyanide ion. So in, you know, back in the day, we might've said like NaCN with a good polar A product solvent like acetone or DMSO or something along those lines. But in this time, we're not emphasizing that so much. So you might just see it simply written as like NaCN, but you might see the solvent included. Uh, and exactly straight up SN2. And now we've made a nitrile with one more carbon than the alkyl halide we started with. Now, the other thing we can do is this is from this particular chapter is we can dehydrate an amide using thionyl chloride here and make the corresponding nitrile as, as well. And so again, a dehydration because those two H's and that O are lost. And so the other byproduct here is water. Cool. And again, we studied this earlier in this chapter with the reactions of amides. So the action of an amide is also the synthesis of a nitrile here showing up in two places. Now let's take a look at the reactions of nitriles. So the first reaction of a nitrile is just simply reduction with lithium aluminum hydride, which we saw earlier in this chapter. And uh, in this case, you're just going to reduce that carbon nitrogen triple bond to a carbon nitrogen single bond and get the corresponding primary amine. So again, from earlier in this chapter, uh, this one we studied in the reactions of, uh, for the synthesis of carboxylic acids. So when we specifically looked at just the H3O plus with heat here. And so again, with any carboxylic acid derivative, we found out including the nitrile, H3O plus is going to get you the corresponding carboxylic acid. Now, in addition to doing this in an acid catalyzed hydrolysis, we call this, you can also do base catalyzed hydrolysis with hydroxide and heat. So, and at the end of step one, you'd have the corresponding carboxylate, and then you just add H3O plus to protonate it and get the corresponding carboxylic acid. So, cool. Those are our two uh, review reactions. And the next one, maybe you've seen it and perhaps you haven't, uh, but we'll cover it here and you can make a ketone uh, with Grignard addition to a nitrile as well. So now we'll take a look at that Grignard addition, but before we do, I just want to remind you of something we learned in the last chapter. And we learned that with a ketone aldehyde, if you had a primary amine with your acid catalyst, you can form an imine. You turn that carbon oxygen double bond into a carbon nitrogen double bond, and we call that an imine or a shift base. And then water is your byproduct. Now, we also found out that this reaction was completely reversible. It's acid catalyzed in both directions. But if you add water with acid, i.e. H3O+, you'll shift the equilibrium back towards the reactants. We called that the hydrolysis of imines here. And it turns out that hydrolysis reaction is going to be important here because one of the intermediates we're going to form in this reaction is an imine with the Grignard addition to a nitrile. And we're going to form it under acidic conditions, and which is why that imine is going to get, end up getting converted to a ketone, which will be the functional group in our final product here. So once again, think of a Grignard as a carbanion, and in this case, that carbanion is going to come attack the partially positive carbon here. So instead of being double bonded to an oxygen like we normally see uh, the attack of, here it's triple bonded to a nitrogen, so very still very partially positive carbon, very good electrophile. And we'll just push these pi electrons out towards the nitrogen. So we'll end up with a carbon nitrogen double bond, and then we'll have attached a new carbon in this case, a methyl group. So getting us right here, this nitrogen here is going to have a negative charge, and then we're gonna add H3O plus. That H3O plus is first and foremost gonna protonate that nitrogen. And if you look, that is an imine but that imine is forming under conditions of H3O plus. And as we just reviewed, when you have an imine and you add H3O plus, it goes to being a ketone. Well, you know, it's not reversible. You know, it's not like we formed an imine from a ketone, we're just reversing it, but we did form an imine in a different way and it's forming in H3O plus, which will still do hydrolysis of that imine, making our final product here a ketone instead. 
And so for some of you, you might have seen this in the chapter on aldehydes and ketones, that last chapter uh, for the synthesis of a ketone. For some of you, not so much. Uh, but I covered it here. I think I also covered it there, uh, recalling potentially. Uh, like I said, though, for some of you, this will be review. For some of you, this will be the first time you've seen it. And it's a little bit tricky if we didn't review imine formation and then imine hydrolysis right beforehand. So, but nifty little way to make a ketone with Grignard addition to a nitrile. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best thing you can do to make sure that other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guides that go with these lessons, if you are looking for practice problems on carboxylic acids and their derivatives, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.